five day. Green water, that's what we come to the Bahamas for. Look at this. I'm sure there's still some fish around though. Connie likes green water. She voted to get in first after a bushwhacker this morning at 7.30. Seven thirty bushwhackers, but we're gonna hop in still. Time to gear up and get the mask on. No, no, it's good up here. Okay. Okay, guys. Hopping in the water, got my gorilla sling, and the first thing I see is exactly what we thought. It's green water, not looking too good, but still. I know there's fish around and we're just going to make the best of it and it's really not terrible water. Tons of little hogfish around. We saw so many of these little hogfish and while we don't normally target those, especially if someone hasn't used a pole spear before or hasn't used a pole spear in a long time, we suggest shooting a, a smaller hogfish or maybe not necessarily a trophy hogfish and that's what we were doing with Nick right here. Nick hasn't shot a pole spear in a while, wanted him to shoot it just a, make sure his gear worked fine, and he couldn't knock off any rust. So he went down to the bottom, lined up on a nice hog, and hit it absolutely perfectly. Nothing wrong with that. Nick was like the sharpshooter of the day. It was unbelievable. Nick's yeah. first one. Yeah, that's what it does. And Joey doing lessons on how to rig a pole spear. Yeah. Nice little warm up. That's not what we're here for, but Nick hasn't shot a pole spear in 14 years, so nice little warm up. So you go through there. Through the yeah. rubber band, up to there. And then it goes on there. That way, that's what holds ah, it on. Okay. It'll make it, and then your tip will go on there. This is just all kinked up, probably because of how it was stored. Oh, no, there, there you go. Right. So you're, now you're ready. And we're going to move on. Back in the water again, and there's that hogfish that could just kind of dipped under that ledge right there. That's the one I was looking for, and then this one showed up. They were about the same size. I think the other one might have been a little bit bigger, but I just started following this one. He was doing the nose away from me shot, which I don't like. He turned sideways a little bit, and I could have got lucky, maybe slid the spear in there, but he wasn't really a giant, or she wasn't really a giant hogfish, so I wasn't in a big hurry to get a shot off. I took my time, as it went around a corner, I took the shot, and that's that gorilla sling, so it's got the got the line on it, so I don't have to chase after the sling. I could just pull it up, and again, not a giant hogfish, but a really nice hogfish, at least for what we were seeing for the day so far. I quickly brained the hogfish. It's good for a couple of reasons. It kills the fish right away, but then also, uh, it lessens your chances of having a shark come in, because the fish is no longer Honey. struggling. <laughs> Now we're back in the water on the same spot and I was seeing these yellow jacks come around. The yellow jacks, I've said it before, they're amazing sashimi. I always like to plug a yellow jack or a sira mackerel or something like that because we're craving sushi, we don't have any tuna, it's something really nice to get on the table that a lot of the people haven't had. There's always someone on the trip that has never had yellow jack and thinks we're crazy when we shoot one. So I had those couple of yellow jacks. They went out of the frame. I've kind of stopped looking at them. I don't really care if I shoot one right now. I know I'm gonna see more throughout the day most likely. Uh, but then they came back. I did a couple grunts and they came in close enough for a shot. You could just see how fast those yellow jacks are and how much power they took so much line and it's not a big yellow jack. It just took that much line right away. I ripped them in because we always have shark problems here and I wanted to get the fish in as fast as possible. It's not like a crazy shark problem, but we always see sharks. Usually the reef sharks can be a pretty big nuisance. Now I'm at a spot that I dove about a month earlier that had some lobster on it when lobster season was closed. Lobster season's open, so I got the flashlight, I'm looking around, and I saw this guy. By the time I saw him, it was too late. If I had the pole spear cocked back, 
I could have let it fly. And the video is a little deceiving, but that is a massive Kubera. That ledge is well big enough for me to fit through. And that's just the heartbreaker, but we're about to make up for it because in the distance on the other side of that rock is a grouper. Now I have been kicking my butt off, chasing this grouper through the grass and through the sand, trying to get it to hole up. I thought it was gonna find a little spot to go into that head right there, that little coral head, but it didn't. It did like a circle around it and just kept making his way. Now I'm not really swimming aggressively, but I'm trying to follow the fish pretty quickly to try to get him to go somewhere to hole up. So I'm swimming as hard as I can pretty much, but in a calm way, if that kind of makes sense. I can see a big coral head out in the distance right there, and he looks like he's making a beeline for that. So I just keep looking at him. I see him disappear into the rocks right there, and that's gonna be my shot. He may have stopped right there. He may have stopped five feet, and he may have went all the way into the center of the head and out another hole before I even have any idea what's going on. So I took a quick breath. I'm already completely winded. I got the flashlight going. I get in the hole and I see a big old grouper tail waiting for me and I knew this was gonna be my shot. Back up, back up, back up, back up. Right away I start calling for backup. Nick and Scott were there pretty much immediately, but we couldn't see what was going on. I didn't know if he tore off, I didn't know if he was in the rock, if he was sticking out, but once the dust cleared a little bit, we could see his head. Nick swam down there and put a perfect shot. There's Nick's shot right there. A really, really nice size yellowfin grouper. Biggest one I've ever shot uh, and biggest one I've ever seen. I know they get bigger, but this is a beautiful fish. We tried to pull him out right there, but my spear is going in the hole from the other way so it won't come out. I got that big old Nomad pole spear right down there by Scott, and now we have to plan kind of an extraction. Ideally, what I would like to do is just get my spear out of the fish and let us pull them up with Nick's, uh, but getting those slip tips out can be a little tricky sometimes. What we ended up doing was unscrewing the back portion of my pole spear. That way it would fit through the rock because it wasn't really fitting the whole thing in there without probably bending it really bad and risking breaking it. So after a couple drops down and working it and seeing what's going on, I was able to get the slip tip off of my spear and which freed the fish, but we had also taken the back portion off the spear as well. So this is once it's already been done, the slip tip's already off my spear, the rubber band's just kind of holding it there. And then uh, we also had the back portion of the pole spear untwisted and we got it. Get a good grip on the fish. Nice yellow fin grouper. Oh. Good job, Nikki. That's the one that was out in the ground? That's the one I was following for a long time. I just kicked my ass off and followed until he rocked up. Well, that was the one that I allowed. That was the one you saw. Yeah, his mouth is sticking out. Yep. Uh, I thought I could come down. You got my other pair? Or my other part. Part. We gotta take the spear apart. Good job, boys. the shot on him and all I could see was his butt in the rocks we saw him out in the open rocked up down in and all I could see was his butt and I took the shot and I don't know where I hit him we're gonna see in a second but this is Nick's slip tip Nick hit him perfectly right there once he came out through the top of the rock so that's Nick's mine I hit him low right there in the gut cavity oh yeah came out on that side but that is a nice one there. Teamwork. Teamwork. Had one little shark on him. That's a, about a 20 pounder. That is a giant too for a yellowfin grouper. I thought it was a black when we first saw him. That's look, sick. look here, Nick. So Nicky saw him first. Where'd you see him, Nick? Under a rock. And what happened? I took off. You are so more detailed when the camera's not on. Nick saw him, I'm he was sticking out, and he started swimming down in the grouper hold butt out into the grass and sand, 
and I kept following him. And he started to rock up one spot, then he turned. I don't know how much I had on video before he went to the final spot. And then there's my tip. Grab that slip tip. Maybe. There we go. No damaged gear, I think. And a solid grouper. I am so happy I switched over to my pole spear. Not saying I couldn't get that on the sling, but the slip tip is crucial for groupers. And the way it works, we have a cable and the cable's looped through this other cable and goes there. And once this goes through a fish, even if it doesn't go all the way through, it'll engage and turn sideways. So this is the Headhunter Nomad pole spear, which is a pretty beefy pole spear. And they also have Nomads. They have the Predator, which is a thinner, faster pole spear. At least that's what I think. And then the sling is the Gorilla Sling, also by Headhunter. We're Headhuntered out today with the suit. And it's all available at Florida Free Divers. We're at another spot right now. We're looking for a trophy hog. No one's got a real trophy hog yet today. Now we're dropping back down again and Nick spotted a head that had a Nassau grouper and a black. The black kind of scooted away and I'm following the black and I know he's under this ledge. I had a shot right there for a split second. He took off and it wasn't a very big black. But while that was going down, Nick got a shot off and got that uh, Nassau grouper that was with the black. So he's got that landed. Now we're gonna go over, check that out and the boat's gonna come by to pick up that fish. I tried for the black, he outsmarted me. There is another yellowfin grouper. This is the same kind of grouper I just shot, but this one's smaller, super pretty, really nice to look at. And then he went off on his way. Wasn't really trying to shoot that one, just kind of checking him out. Now Nick's got a grouper of his own right here. He's got a very nice sized strawberry grouper, and of course he just stones it. Another perfect shot. So he's got the hogfish, the Nassau, the strawberry, awesome shots. Strawberry shot. Show your Nassau off too, Nick. Let me see your Nassau. Nick's getting grouper variety pack going. Now you need a red. Look at Connie. I mean, you think it's gonna be able to We had some weather coming in. Connie's taking cover underneath a pile of fins. And Nick went down to get one last fish for the day. A nice hog, it was our biggest hog of the day. Still no trophy hogfish. And of course, he rolled it. There we go, that's a better one. Just got back, taking everything out of the boat, and here's what we finished up with. There's that big old grouper. Nick got a zero mackerel, that wasn't on video. Couple nice hogs, no giant hogs this trip. Couple nice ones though. Then a pretty decent sized strawberry and a little Nassau also. But that yellow, yellow fin right there, we're gonna go ahead and get a weight on him before we clean him up. Looking good. We're gonna get these guys back on ice and start filleting them one at a time. That is a stud of a yellowfin grouper right there. Twenty one point nine. It's always time for exclusive Nick Furrow interviews. <laughs> what did you think of your first day diving in the Abacos? I actually loved it. What was your favorite part? I don't know. Come on, Joey. I'm not. Whoa, language. Not bad. I know. He said one thing at least, and then we had to go oh. beep, beep, beep. <laughs> so, quick little. Well, not really a quick little dive session. We dove a lot there. We worked our butts off. We usually get a lot more big hogs. They just weren't around today. Didn't see any big muttons, but I'm stoked on that yellowfin grouper. And we got a couple solid hogs. Nick and Scott. Each shot a nice hog, and uh, I think I shot a small one. I'm not sure, I don't think I even shot a hog. But we got some hogfish there. We got lobster. We got some other sides and salad and stuff. I don't know what we're doing next. We got wind coming. You're gonna have to get creative with it, but we'll get back out there. <laughs>